All right, Dan Cuchimilio here along with Bora for NorCal Sports Network. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Farhan Zaidi and putting a fork in him, literally, in not literally, but in the sense of his days are numbered, I believe. And we've been calling for this for the better part of over two years now. And a lot of noise coming out, Bora. Lots of noise the last couple of weeks, reminding me of last September when there was noise around Gabe Kapler. It's very similar. Um, if you remember towards the end of last year, you got some news leaks, you got some articles that were written. Um, there was there was a bunch of, of interviews about the team and the, and the clubhouse culture and everything. A lot of things were coming out last year around this time. A lot of things are coming out about Farhan this year around this time uh my prediction is that he's he's gone i think there's about a 95 percent chance that that ownership has already told him he's not coming back i think they've already made his made their decision and i think the baggerly piece um with with posey having to having to intervene with the with the chapman signing and and however much he did um it was kind of the nail in the coffin for them yeah i think the news it, you know it's been steadily kind of been put out there earlier this year. I don't remember what month it was. It seems like around June, maybe that uh, Laura Britt and uh, Sean Estes, who we've had here on the show, were on the set. And Laura asked the question of Chris Mad Dog Russo. What is your view? An, an open ended question, not a direct question like, hey, what do you think of this? But an open-ended question for Chris Russo to just completely go off on Farhan. And that's the 49, I'm the 49, the Giants flagship television station, which I believe they even have part ownership in NBC Sports Bay Area. They and, they control what, what is being put out. Yeah, they control. If they didn't want that out there, so Mad Dog basically uh you know, put uh, Farhan in the ringer and, you know, he, he turned the washing machine on him and said, he's done. I, I wouldn't have this guy back. What do you got a job for life? Hey, what, do you, what, do you, what do you got a job for life? Uh, you know, uh, what is it? What, what, what is he? Uh, one winning season in five. How long has he been there? Five years? Uh, no, six. Six years? He's going to, what does he have a job forever? <laughs> I mean, come on. He says, I, and, and then his last words were something to the effect, if I was in charge, I wouldn't be bringing him back. No, so, and it's it's not even it's not even a hot take. That's pretty much it, I think around the league it's widely accepted and it's it's widely known that Farhan hasn't had a good tenure with the Giants. He's had one winning season. The Giants have had one trip to the playoffs since 2016. Uh it hasn't been a good tenure. This is year six, and the Giants are not gonna make the playoffs and they're gonna have a record under five hundred. So it's not it's not it shouldn't be to anybody's surprise that this is happening. This has been, we've been calling for it for two years yeah. now and it's, 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 it's past time. Yeah. And if you look behind me, you guys can see those hats uh, behind me. Those are in order of the standings guys. And uh, take a look there at the San Francisco giants right over here in, in uh, fourth place. And we're telling you that there's no difference next year with Farhan back. They're going to be in fourth place next year. So they've got to make a move. Even Major League Baseball Network with uh, Dan O'Dowd, former general manager of the Colorado Rockies, during the trade deadline, I was watching that this year, July 30th, and it was like, what are the San Francisco Giants doing? He said, what is their plan? Look, we're, the Giants have become a laughing stock among baseball executives, and it's because of Farhan. He has made this franchise what was once, you know, the uh, franchise of Envy winning three championships in five years with the most beautiful ballpark in the major leagues and pulling off three World Series championships was like we were at the top of the baseball networks. All the news. Yeah, everything was great. And then, you know, they have a couple of rough years and then they make this change with Farhan and 2019 all to try to 
supposedly catch the Dodgers and they've gotten further apart. The chasm has grown wider. It's, you know, it, it was like this, you know, in 17, 18, they bring in Farhan. It just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now you can't even see the two teams. I mean, there's, you know, they're 400 miles apart from San Francisco to LA, but they're thousands of miles apart when it comes to uh, them playing and putting a competitive product on the field. And it's not getting better anytime soon. It's going to be a while. Uh, Correct. It's going to be a while for the Giants to even come close to the to the Dodgers. The one thing I'll say about Farhan that is the one thing that I think has kind of broken him as not him, but has his the the moves that he's made that have broken this team have been the trade deadline. If you look at last year, the Giants were the number one wild card spot. They were they were number one in the wild card. They were having a great season. And what does he do at the deadline? He gets AJ Pollock and Mark Matthias, whoever it was. That, yeah, where's, that where, was where, where are those move. two guys right now? They're, they're out of the league, to no surprise. I think AJ Pollock had like one at bat with the Giants. Right. Uh, that that was the big trade deadline move last year. This trade trade deadline, you weren't in the in any of the wild card spots. You trade away Jorge Soler. You trade away Alex Cobb. You get two young kids who 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 are in your farm system right now, and we have no clue whether they're going to be good or not. It's going to be a while till that till they're going to come up, and then uh, you you boost up Marco Luciano to be this everyday DH, and you give him twenty something at bats, and you send him back. I don't even think play. they gave him that many at bats before they benched him. Uh, they gave him nine or eleven at maybe 12 at bats or something. And then he sat for eight or nine days mm -hmm. and then he came back in and then they sent him back down and they brought him back up. In fact, uh, you know, you bring up a, a great point about this constant up and down, right? Bora mm -hmm. guys are, are constantly been brought up and down. And this article that came out today from Susan Slusser and John Shea, you see that right there uh, dated September 17th. 2024 titled Farhan Zaidi's future with the Giants in question before lame duck 2025, despite getting his Chapman deal. So here's the, the thing that stuck out to me in the article. There's one set. The, there's a lot that we'll go over, but I want to point out one thing um, down here near the end of the article let me see if I can find it. Uh, right there. There it is. Okay. It's uh, while some of the young players have emerged this year and produced particularly Elliot Ramos and Tyler Fitzgerald, other prospects have promoted to the Giants clearly weren't ready to perform at the big league level or were moved up and down without receiving ample playing time. According to sources, the team's ownership sometimes has been puzzled with how players are constantly shuffled on and off the roster. To me, that's the nail in the coffin right there. Yep. If owners are, what was the word used? Puzzled or? Puzzled. Puzzled. Uh, guys, and all these other leaks that are coming out. And how about the first leak was he's not have a guaranteed contract for 2026 as previously thought mm -hmm. who, who gave that information How did it, that it's it's all i mean we've had the the contract guarantees we've had the baggerly piece about posey and we now have the slusser piece about ownership and it's how they're puzzled about about farhan it's not to me this is all and we've said we said it before it's all coming out at this specific time and it's, yes. I mean, the Giants are pretty much mathematically eliminated. I think they're the magic number is either two or three. It's so they're three right now. Yeah. They're all but but eliminated from the playoffs. In fact, uh, glad you brought that up. We've got the tragic number right there. Not the magic number, the Giants' tragic number at three. And there's the coffin that we'll put Farhan in once it becomes zero, which will be here during the Baltimore series, I'm convinced. It will happen. 
Because if, um, if if the Braves or Mets win and the Giants lose, that's two, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's going to happen. Giants are this... Giants are losing at least two out of three from the. Yeah, it's going to happen in this series. But let's take a quick peek at this article. A uh, couple of uh, point out a couple things in in here, Bora. Uh, I thought the very opening line was interesting. As the days wind down on the San Francisco Giants' dreadful season, President of Baseball Ops Farhan Zaidi appears to be on the hot seat. There you go, right there. That, that's that's it. That's all you need to hear. Because <laughs> if you look at the Giants' record, they're what seventy-two and 78. seventy-eight. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not like this horrible record. It's not. It's not your so and so stereotypical dreadful season. But there are expectations with this team. The San Francisco Giants are a top five market team. Uh, up there with the Mets, the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the Cubs, all, all these big market teams. So the Giants, the Giants need to be in the playoffs every year. And for them not to not make the playoffs in 22 and 22, 23, and now in 24, uh, it's just, it can't happen. Uh, when, when you're a big market team, you need to be playing for the playoffs every year. And if you don't have the person in charge, to, to take you to the playoffs, then then he's out. I mean, like Mad Dog said, does he have a does he have a job for life? No, the answer is no. I mean, if you don't perform, you get fired, and he hasn't performed. How about Buster's recent comments from another article that I was reading earlier yesterday? I believe it was where he made the reference to. He said something like, "I'd rather." hit three broken bat singles then line out to somebody three times exactly because he you said, know what that's baseball and he said this is and this is he goes it's about results so they're putting words they're frustrated buster wants to win buster you know some people are talking about buster becoming the president of baseball ops i don't see that i don't see him becoming the guy that is Farhan's role. I could see him maybe his role as one of the minority owners who sits on the board as maybe overseeing mm -hmm. baseball ops to the point where he's in on some of the things, but he's not doing the day-to-day -day operations no. mm -hmm. of what a president of baseball ops does. Um, you know, maybe he's in on some of the negotiations for free agents. Maybe he's in on Hey, you know, let's. Hey, do we have the approval to make this trade? I don't think Buster's making the phone calls and making the trades or anything like that. I don't see. I can't I see that. I don't think so either. I don't yeah. think he would want that responsibility. No, that's, because that's he's a, still he's still raising his kids and everything. Yeah, that's a three hundred sixty-five day a year job where you're mm -hmm. totally responsible. But I think the Giants need to go back to the way things used to be when they were winning. And here's my solution. Here's my solution, Bora. Uh, you know, we talk about, you know, politics. The whole politics has always been a two-state solution over there in the Middle East, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a two-state solution. How about a two-man solution to running the Giants? Brian Sabian and Ned Coletti bringing the two back together to recreate what the, they did in 1997, taking over a 98 loss team in 96 and promptly turning it around into eight winning seasons, a uh, few division titles, a world series appearance in that eight years. Had the playoffs been to the playoffs back then from 97 to 04, if the format today's format was in place with three wild cards, the giants would have made the playoffs eight straight years, Bora. If you and, look at Ned Coletti's uh, track record, everywhere he goes, he's a winner. Yep. He went to the Giants. He was a winner. He went to the Dodgers. He was a winner. He turned that Dodgers franchise around because yeah, they the were Dodgers, in bankruptcy. Yeah, they were in trouble. And he made some great draft picks. Uh, how about Clayton Kershaw, Cody Bellinger, and um, Corey uh, Seager? Corey Seager, yeah. I mean, two of those guys are probably Hall of Famers, Seager and Kershaw. Made some great trades. Manny Ramirez, um, he was responsible 
Look, the Sign team that, Puig. Yeah, the team that won the 2020 uh, World Series was very instrumental, had Ned's fingerprints all over that team. So they didn't win it under him, but they got close. He got the two National League Championship Series. Brian Sabian, uh, three-time world champion, former scout, uh, drafted Derek Jeter. Look, knows baseball. These two men know baseball. And here's the plan that I would suggest. You bring in Brian Sabian, Ned Coletti. We've heard from Ned Coletti on this show. Now, Ned has never mentioned to me that he's interested in this job. I don't know if he'd be interested in this job. This is my thinking, and I'm I'm this would be my solution. But I would say this. Um, and I don't even know if Brian would be open to the job. But here, here's what I do know. They both know baseball. They both worked very well together. We've heard stories on NorCal Sports Network with Ned Coletti telling how him and Brian would be up till three in the morning trying to figure out how to make this club better. How to what? What are we going to do to help them win the next game? Uh, brainstorming together. Do you think Farhan's doing that at three in the morning? Come on. The answer is no. Yeah. So get some real baseball men back in here, San Francisco Giants. Bring Ned Coletti, Brian Sabian back together. They can co-run this thing. And you know what they'll do? They'll go out and hire the best baseball people. They'll get the scouts back that have been let go by Farhan. They will do analytics still, but it won't be an overemphasis on analytics like Farhan has done and made the entire organization built around the analytics. It'll be used as a tool. As a tool, exactly. They will hire the best player development people in the minor leagues and get the player development going. Ned has connections all over the game. So does Brian. Look, Ned's got connections with the Dodgers who have great staff, obviously. And then you get that going. And then, you know what? People, some of the excuses I've heard, oh, they're too old. They, they're they past their prime. Look, these guys are sharp. Brian's still in the game. Ned is a scout for the San Jose Sharks. You think, And he travels all over the place. You think he's out? No way. So get these two together again. Bring back the glory days of the Giants. Uh, Ned loves the Giants organization. Got great respect for the organization. He knows the Dodgers organization. What more would you want than somebody who knows what's going on in the Dodgers to try and compete and beat the Dodgers? So you bring in them for a two-year contract. And then you know what you do? Let those guys run the organization. And during that two-year period, they've got the successor, their training, who they handpick, who knows how to run baseball, and they will raise him up in the right way instead of just going out and picking some young guy like you did last time with Farhan, who had no uh, experience other than what he got in, for his time with the Dodgers, but he was not doing the thing. It was Andy, uh, or it was... Um, Andrew Friedman. Andrew, I always want to say Andy McPhail. Every time I say Andrew Friedman, Andy <laughs> McPhail, who used to be the National League president, comes to my mind. So Andrew Friedman, yes. So that's the solution that I think the Giants should do. Go back to winning ways. Look, you've got three World Series championship trophies right there sitting inside the uh, on the uh, club level where I had season tickets. I saw those three trophies sitting in that case. Bring that those days back. Why would you want to settle for this stuff? And if you know what, I'll say, Bora, and I think you'll wholeheartedly agree. If the owners do not fire Farhan, we can't blame Farhan next year anymore. It's all on the owners. It, it is if if Farhan doesn't get canned this off season, it is a hundred percent on the owners because for for how much shit we give Farhan, I mean, it, it he is who he is. He's an analytics guy, and he's always going to be an analytics guy. There's a, there's a place for him in baseball. It's just I don't, in my opinion, and and Dan, I know you agree with me on this. It's not as the the head of the baseball. He has right. a role on a team. It's just not as the top guy. And if ownership doesn't get rid of him, 
as the as the president of baseball operations, the focus is no longer going to be on Farhan because he's just going to do what he what he knows how to do. The focus is going to be on ownership because they are going to be it is going to be obvious that all they want is the paycheck and they're not going to be going for it all. We heard it in the in the off season or one of the press press conferences with with Greg Johnson. We're just trying to break even. Uh, right. the ownership spent a lot of money this year. I will give them credit for that. They spent in the off season. They got Chapman. They got Solaire. They, they got Snell. I think they, they were like the second or third most spent team in the off season behind the Dodgers. Uh, so this ownership group has proven that they're willing to spend. And I think with the right guys in charge, uh, this could be a, gr- a pretty good team because there are some pieces on this team that, that have value. Fitzgerald Chapman has value. Elliot Ramos has value. Uh, Logan Webb has value. Hayden Birdsong and Kyle Harrison, they have value. So this right. team is relatively young. Some of their core pieces are relatively young. And if you can just supplement those guys with some with some great veterans around them, this team could be going somewhere. The problem is with Farhan in charge, I don't I don't, and I don't. I don't think the Giants fan base has any confidence that that Farhan is going to be able to sign the big guy, the the Juan Soto. I mean, if right. you get if you get Ned Coletti and Brian Sabian here in here, anything's possible because the giant the Giants are rich. They are loaded with money. They own Oracle outright. They have Mission Rock developing. I mean, they they are worth billions and billions of dollars. Uh, the article who was that by Ann Killian describes in 10 years that the Giants yes. are going to own the Bay Area because the A's are leaving. The well, Giants they'll, are going to Not only to be, own the Bay Area, but they will be the, the richest. They'll, they'll surpass the New York Yankees. Exactly. The of, Giants are going to the Giants are going to have a lot of money. So right. they can afford to to sign Juan Soto. They can afford to overpay Juan Soto. Right. Uh, you just need the right guy in charge to be able to get that done. Absolutely. And uh you know in closing I, I just want to point out here as you did Bora you know we don't want to bash continue to bash Farhan as the person he is who he is and it's not his fault that he's not capable of running the team at this level he is valuable as a baseball man in in another department but you know he's just not the right guy to actually run the entire organization of baseball operations and just want to point out this one line here in Farhan and we wish Farhan well uh, it says Zaidi's continue to work despite being hospitalized twice in recent weeks with an undisclosed ailment. They were able to complete the contract with Matt Chapman through his time in the hospital. Hey, look, we don't know what Farhan's health situation is, but you know, we wish the man well and a speedy recovery for whatever he may be dealing with. And uh, so, yeah, no, we, we don't care for we Farhan. Don't have any, we don't have any Ill, Ill feelings towards the person. We, do, right. we, just, we just don't like the way he's, he's conducted business as the GM. But as a person, we wish him all the best and, and hope he gets better. Absolutely. And guys, with that, we are going to uh, end this little uh, topic here, what we talked about. But uh, catch us on NorCal Sports Network. We will be back tonight at 8 o'clock. You'll have watched already watched this. So at 8 o'clock tonight, Giants postgame show after the Giants-Orioles game. So um, enjoy the uh, rest of your evening as you watch this after and come back at 8 o'clock. Bora, well, you'll be back tonight, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, it'll be Bora and I, and maybe Lou Marston will join us, and we'll be talking Giants and uh, Dan. What's your what's your uh, prediction for the game? What's your score prediction? You know, Blake Snell's going, and he's going against two tonight. Let me look here. Um, game time's about ready to start here. That game. Uh, let me just look at the pitching matchup. I can't remember who was pitching for the Orioles. Oh, Albert Suarez, former Giant. Former Giant, yep. Former Giant. Um, well, I'm hoping Blake Snell does great because he's on my fantasy baseball team, and I gotta get a, I, I gotta get a good outing. So I'm gonna say, but the Giants probably won't get them some, some any support. So I think uh, 
Orioles probably win this game three to two. I'm I'm going to say four two four two Orioles. Okay, uh, Dan, you know who's in the eight spot for the Giants at second base, uh, batting one forty three. Don't tell me. Don't tell me who is it. I haven't looked. Donovan Don- Walton. I was going to say is it Donovan Walton? Okay. <laughs> All right, that's all we need to know that Farhan's running this team still. Bob Melvin is not putting Donovan Walton in the lineup, and that's why I said earlier, I think Bob Melvin has gone to Buster, and he says, I can't take it anymore. I can't run this team the way it needs to be run. And that's why we say Farhan is gone. Put a fork in him. Guys, we'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock. Take care.